Good evening, good evening, good evening, Internet World, good evening, YouTube, good evening, Facebook. Uh, welcome to yet another episode of Intoxicated, the Sip and Chat Show, the online commercial free podcast whereby we promote local talent and locally consumed beverages. I am your host, uh, Jamal Adams, aka GT Golden Boy. And tonight we have a special guest in the house, you know. I'm not going to even try to introduce this guy because I don't even know half of his... <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Man, this guy does so much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to allow him to introduce himself. For those of you who may not know who he is, I'm allow him to do. All right, good evening, um, everyone. Thanks for tuning in um, um, into the show. My name is Shane Pierce. Um, despite what Jamal would have said, I think I'm just the regular old person. Multi-Renaissance man. Uh, I... Multi-disciplined person. Like, Yeah, I mean, I'm just... A typical millennial. Just I like simple things. Um, I like enjoying myself. Um, and I like goals. So I guess having goals a lot of multiple to goals. A lot of things because multiple you can just take boxes. Multiple yeah. goals. Multiple goals. Yeah, uh, multitasking comes naturally. I guess. Yeah. So it's um, it's com, it's what well, I could say it's compulsory. It is compulsory, and it's also traditional for us to take a shot at the beginning of the show because you know our car in this conversation, and if you don't drink, you can die from thirst. And we want one of Guyana's future leader dying of Taurus and intoxicated. Definitely. So, <laughs> have you tried everything here before? Um, pretty much, yes. <laughs> I like three year old. You tried three year old. I had it once. What type of <laughs> what type of rum boogie you is? Nobody ever does drink three year old. No, I mean, well, I like Eldorado five year old, and then so and I like pretty much anything brown. But whenever you go out, you don't really discriminate against alcohol. So, so. we gonna try first. It's a shot. We already had it. We already started with. Uh, a drink, but it's well, let's shot. tribute to the three year old. Year old. Oh. Yeah. Right. One second. All right, we're going to cheers to you being one of the multi disciplined youths of Guyana. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's, a lot of people don't really dig um, a lot of the local rum, but I mean, they say that without even trying it. So. That's a fact, yeah. So, that's a fact. And then when they go other places, they still drink the same cheaper stuff. Mm -hmm. and, 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 that's when, normal, and that's so. when they're trying to, you know, get the local stuff. It's exactly. crazy. You know, when, whenever you're in Guyana, you don't want to eat sugar cake and, and tarma bar and all this. But as soon as you step forth on another port, this is when you, the craving starts. It's crazy, you know? Yeah, I, I know a lot of people always, whenever I travel, it's like, um, bring this Eldorado for me, bring this. Bring but when they're in Guyana... Some that. people even want R1 and all these things that they used cute. to make that. So I don't, I don't know. So, what's up, Shane? You know, you had a grand entrance after you came in the, the, the salon tonight. The ladies was going crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> is that always how it is yeah, with you? <laughs> it's, it's not how it is all the time. A lot of, I think a lot of people don't even know me. Um, but uh, The ladies know you do, Shane. <laughs> uh, well, I guess the entrance tonight um, explains that. I, don't well, know. I, I still remain being me. You know, the, the first question I want to ask you is, you know, I would like to have your take on, you know, how you feel on how, you know, we as a society treats young black males whenever, you know, we decide that we want to do something different. For example, like being a fashion designer, for example, not being a womanizer, for example, you know, even doing makeup. How do you, how do you feel about how we treat those persons? I feel, um, to be honest, I think it's the, the stigma that um, is attached to stuff like that when a guy tries to go out to the norm or something that is, is uncalled for. I think, um, it, not because um, an individual... I mean, because you, but you can talk. And sure, speak. sure, sure. Yeah. Well, not because an individual <laughs> um, decides to go on a different path. Um, it means that um, they're, they're different in terms of their built or their likes or, or whatever they may choose to do with their own personal life. But I think society just, they're accustomed to one thing. And when you deviate from that, they somehow, they, they're not, they don't understand how to complement. Soci society or the guy in the society. Because whenever you leave the Guyanese border. Some of these things are pretty normal, especially in New York and stuff like this. You know, we have uh, males, a lot of males are dominating the makeup, uh, that, that, the makeup profession. True. But the I guess designing it, it comes with time. Um, and I think because maybe those countries would have had a longer time being exposed to that um, kind of thing and the culture, 
um, that at the start they might have had that same discrimination and, and stigma attached to it. But I think it's uh, society will learn as time progresses, but now they might not be able to handle it. Cheers to that. Yeah. So, you know, for those who may not know, where exactly did you grow up here in Guyana? So, I was born in um, Essex River at uh, the Study Hospital. So, I, I grew up a country boy. A country boy? Don't know that <laughs> movie, right? So, I mean, they just see me around and think like they assume the, the, a whole lot of other things. But, I mean, I've had a humble upbring, upbringing, um, just roaming the streets sometimes barefoot. Barefoot? I just still, I just still walk barefoot sometimes. You know, from from downstairs to the bathroom. That's what I just walk free. Other than that, I always got to have a slipper. So, as as a as a young man growing up in SCK, what was the one thing that you would always look forward for as a child? All right, my favorite time in I mean, at school used to always be around Christmas because it Christmas in SCK back then was a different feeling that you would have if you spent it in town or even out of Guyana. Because you had this feeling of togetherness, the, the, the things, uh, this masquerade. Wait, 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 wait. So you're trying to say the people in town don't be to, uh, in that no, togetherness? No, no, let, me, let me explain <laughs> it. Let, oh, okay, okay. Explain, explain it. it. Okay. So, they, everybody knows masquerade. But, but yeah. in a scribble, we call it uh, bad cow or mad bull or mad whatever. Bull, yeah. So, But the difference with the, that when it's been how it's happening in Georgetown is that People just go out in the streets, you see them, you drop something, and they, they block Okay, the road, like the whatever. masquerade. Okay. Yeah, so but in, in that script, but what used to happen then is that entire villages were called and followed these and things. And participate? Through, um, wow. Throughout the streets. I mean, if you know that this band came from your village, you and they're going like maybe 10 villages away, they will start the band. People go up there, meet them, and then walk all the way back um, with them and singing and dancing on the streets. I mean, and that's basically what I... um. I look forward to. Uh, so you used child. to be participating in that. I, at first, I was scared, right? <laughs> scared. I mean, I used to look forward to it, but then yeah. when they got close, I used to run and hide on top of the wardrobe, and then people started coming look for me. But I mean, it was still, it, it's still something that we look forward to. I mean, that was it. In in our village, people would come from the back houses to come to our house because the, the person that's the, where the vibes on yeah. the road. Okay. So they come out um, and we all st- um, stay together. All the kids in the village just come out and have fun. Okay. Uh, so does that goes on right now? Today, it, or it, it happens, that, but it's not as big as it used, used to. to be. Uh, I, I don't know if it's because um, I'm not there as much that I don't feel a connection to it that man, much. Man, listen, man, everything is changing. As a child, I used to look forward to going on the malls and witness the, 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 the float and all of things. You see them change if they break down, right? Yeah. Know? So everything changes with time. Time changes everything, uh, so... That's that. Who did you grow up with as a as a child? Um, well, um, I grew up in um, a single parent home. Um, it okay. basically was my mom, uh, my elder brother, um, my mom's sister, sisters. I um, had two aunts okay. and another cousin there. And then from time to time, um, things changed. I mean, well, when I was younger, my grandmother was there, but she, I think, she passed away when I was four or five. Okay. So there's not much memory there, but it was always um, I grew up in my mom's family. And okay. The just like until me. like around. Um, I think it was either late sometime in high school and my mom's uh, brother came in to live with us. So it's basically my brother and I and females. So how important was having a decent education to you and your mom or your mom and your mom's family? Did they pressure you into picking up your books every afternoon? What what was that? You know? I, I think um, education was something that's definitely important in our family. My mom was a teacher. Um, okay. So several of our sisters... Um, or teachers as well too. So I think education is one of those things that even if you wanted to run from it, but when you get home, you're always in that teacher mode that they try to force the books on you even if you didn't want to. So education was always um, on top of the list. I mean, but there's always play, but education is Definitely, still. definitely. They, they, you know, all, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy and all play and no work. Yeah, and it doesn't uh, <laughs> help when you live five houses away from the school either. Well, so. you can't miss a day because get to the teacher copy yeah, before you exactly. oh, really yeah. with that. At one point in time, the school was actually in our house um, when the school was building. So I basically wow. moved from upstairs to downstairs. <laughs> downstairs that's crazy. Yeah. So let me, you know, at, at 10 years old, what was she an aspiring to become at 10 years old? Could you remember? Um, back then, um, yeah. when I was younger... I, th- I think the, the my aspirations led towards the medical field. Medical so, field. Um, because um, the influences in, in my life, um, that being um, one of my aunt and uh, my cousin, they were in the medical field. One was a pharmacist and one was a nurse. So I looked up to those persons okay. and I decided, okay, cool. I see them doing things that I want to do when I when I grow up and when I try it out. You just actually mentioned school. 
before you turned 18 years old, what, what were the names of some of the schools that you would have attended? Whether it was in Essequibo or Georgetown or wherever else. Okay, well, starting from nursery, I am, which was in Essequibo as well. Um, it, it was the Zard Nursery School. Uh, that school was actually in my mother's school because she's a teacher. So, okay, yeah. so it was a high school. and um, But we had one room in the high school where the nursery school was. So mm -hmm. I started going there and then um, moved over to study primary. Uh, from study primary to President's College, uh, then into university. Oh, you went to President's College? Yeah. We'll get into that, but, you know, it's time for us to take another shot. Uh, we can't repeat the shots. Sure, sure, We sure. have to try something new. All right, so we, we went clear, so let's do brown this time then. Brown? Yes, yes, yes. That's... We, we, extra mature? Yeah, let's, let's try that. I, I'm not for the interracial drinking. No, I mean, well, know, the, if, <laughs> if you drink it, we drink, drink it. it. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not a bourbon I'm type of person. You see how I'm trembling? Look, no, 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 I'm no, trembling. No, no. Ah. I mean, don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. A lot of people think that bourbon brings out the demon or whatever. It brings out the demon plus the John Mimi. No, 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 no. no. I would start beating up all these walls in it. Like, <laughs> nah, the rum is sweet. Right? The rum is so, sweet. Yeah, sweet. Nah, this is. Right. So, cheers to your mom being a positive influence yeah, to your life and many other kids' life, man. Was not bad, right? Yeah. We just <laughs> actually mentioned PC and while I was growing up, right, my own perception about people that was attending PC was that they were like superhumans. Like I had this this thing in my head that if you were going to PC you were like super duper 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 smart. Like I used to put these people on a pedestal mentally, like it was crazy, man. It was <laughs> I, I know the feeling you know? because I, I think I had a similar feeling too when I found out. A couple of, um, well, persons that went to my primary school prior to me, mm -hmm. they were going there and they were offered the school. Uh, it was something that when I saw them uh, and how they behaved afterwards in the okay. interaction, I was like, okay, I see myself doing this. This is what I want and okay. nothing is going to stop me from that. So after your first school year in, in, in President's College, did, ev did what, was it, what was it was everything you imagined? Definitely not. <laughs> well, <laughs> what... No. what, what what was different so, to your expectations? So in my head, uh, when I started President's College, and I think this might have to do a lot with um, pop culture at the time and the mm -hmm. videos and movies that I would have seen on television, I always uh, expected that we will have um, pretty much like metal lockers. You go to the <laughs> and you have this uh, indoor basketball. It's nothing like that. And, and so, and then when I, I turned up there, and then it was like, oh, we've got bunk beds. Wow. And um, some wooden covers that sometimes, if you don't watch it, somebody might break into it. But, <laughs> but I mean, it was all the culture. I mean, it, not that I have anything against it. It was something I came to love and embrace and still do. And I will do it all over again now. But it wasn't as I expected it to, to be, but it was so much and more still. Okay, so what was your most memorable experience at PC? Or I think this is kind of like a two-fold question because um, no, answer right up. Because um, the most memorable moment for me basically was um, I think when I kind of graduated from PC when I was the valedictorian there because it was something I saw when I was in Form 1. Uh, I always wanted to be that person giving the speech even though at that wow. point I was nervous. Or I didn't like public speaking or anything like that. So giving that speech um, at graduation, uh, having my family, friends, and a lot of people that looked up to me there, it was something that uh, it was one of those You must be like super, said. super duper smart. I mean, I mean, I mean yeah, it was hard work. It was uh, the other At part, PC. The, the other good thing about that memory also is like the first time I went to President's College, um, my first graduation seminar they attended, mm -hmm. the, the, the best thing about that was the lunch that you got afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that was, I've never seen so much food in a plate. Wow. I swear I had like half a chicken. What? <laughs> right, well, I mean, but it was, so I, I always equate, um, I like food. So food mm -hmm. and, uh, and that graduation always go together because we always have a special dinner, special lunch um, at graduation and they, they go all out. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're a big eater, you're about your tummy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ladies, y'all hear this, right? If y'all want this man, y'all got to know for cook. <laughs> and I just have a cook egg, all right? <laughs> oh. I got to know for cook. <laughs> and, I, and I could cook really good, too. You see that? So, <laughs> Grew up in his mom, so y'all yeah, got a real challenge. So if, if it was in your power to add a subject or maybe a trade to the PC curriculum, what would it be and why would you add that? I, I think in turn, I, it, this might not be an addition, but I think it might be like a revival. Because mm -hmm. I, I think um, it used to happen to an extent. But for me, I think the 
the subject that needs to be there should be something in the lines of like guidance and counseling. Okay. So uh, a, a lot of times um, with youth in uh, in general, they have a lot of unanswered questions. Mm -hmm. And most of the times they just explore and try to figure it out on their own. But if there's this welcoming body, and it needs to be welcoming, it's not like you can't go and pour all your information into yeah. a teacher or something, and she goes back into the staff room and discuss it. Yeah, yeah. So it, it needs to be genuinely confidential. confidential. Because you at that stage, you don't really know the answer. You think you may know. Mm -hmm. But um, you need the guidance, especially when it comes to like maybe deciding what you want to be in when you go to when they, um, you're going into streams or whatever. A lot of people just go into streams because their friends are there. But there's no career guidance as to, okay, I want to be X. So I need to have these subjects. So, I mean, this having um, something like that def definitely will assist anybody in basically making the right choices. Well, yeah, you, you, you did mention earlier that your mom was a teacher. And actually, you are to the grapevine that you also was a teacher. So what are we going to do? We're going to take a shot. And then we're going to get into that segment of you becoming a teacher and what did you taught and all that. So what would you like to have right now? So, well... I chose the first two shots, right? All so right, I'm right. all about... All right, so, you know, my so. favorite is coconut rum, of course. Everybody who knows me knows I'm in love with the coconut rum. This is the best thing that happened to Guyana since I was born. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but I beg to differ because I think uh, since you were born, I was born, right? So that was the next best thing. That was the next happened. best thing. I died, I died. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, I, I liked it. The first time I tasted the, the um the coconut rum, I was like, it, it blew me away because I was like, I didn't expect it. Uh, I was in survival supermarket and then yeah. somebody was there with samples. So cheers to being the valedictorian at yeah. PC. Beautiful, just beautiful. It's smooth. It's, it's smooth. It's sweet. So at what age were you? Uh, did you be became a teacher? At what age? Oh my um, I think that was somewhere. Um, I think it was 18 or 17 to be honest. So, what was the inspiration behind making that move at such a young age? Um, I, I think, it, it basically, my mom being a teacher, obviously, mm -hmm. that, that basically put thing, uh, puts, thing in, puts things into perspective. No, right? Listen, listen, listen. You could stutter, you could <laughs> use wrong words, wrong syllables, wrong whatever. We can just blame it on you. Because you don't have yeah, to yeah, rush yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it, it gets right? to you, so... Just be yourself, yeah. relax and <laughs> yeah. So her being a, a teacher definitely um made me want to be a teacher at some point, I guess. Um and the other um teaching influences, you know, um in my family, but okay. It was always some I think being in front of a class and basically passing knowledge on to somebody else, uh there those are one of the factors. But I think the thing that pushed me to do it um at that particular point, because when I was in sixth form doing um CAVE, there were two subjects basically that at my school, there were no teachers. Okay. And I had to uh, basically uh, venture down into Georgetown, speak to uh, another school, mm -hmm. try to get me in those classes to find a teacher that they had to help me out with my studies. So I was like, every week, I'm in town at least three or four times wow. a week, and then have to head up back up there for classes. To SQ? Well, no, to, to PC. Man. To PC, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me, right? So... That you basically George some PC, George some PC, so, which is not normal. What what subject did you taught and where did you teach? Well, the first place I taught was at President's College. And, President's College. Yeah, and then I started off doing information technology. IT. Okay. For the six um six form, which is key. That's right after you left President's College well, because well, wow, I was the only person that did the subject at my school when I wrote. So, oh, you got you got um I that particular IT I got um that one I got two two but, okay uh, I'm a grade two in Cape and um. The computer science, I um, got a, a, a great one. Yeah. Okay, but, so you, you began teaching at PC, yeah. IT, and was that it? Or uh, you... Well, I, I after teaching that, um, I left for like a, a, a couple of months, and then I returned again teaching computer science um, okay. unit two. Um, and then I taught at this school on um, Wolford Avenue, um, Al Ghazali Islamic Academy. I okay. taught from form one to five, um, doing IT there. Wow. And while I was at UG, I did the, the lab sessions and the tutorial classes for um the computer class, the computer studies um class class. I can't remember exactly what the, the lecture name and number was, but mm -hmm. basically I was doing the lab sessions uh, for them and making sure that we go through all the content that they would have learned to already. And this was before what what age? Oh, um, before you turned what age? I'm. This is all before twenty four. I'm guessing. Wow. Uh, 
I try not to look on the age that much because it keeps reminding me of how old I'm getting. But <laughs> so you're not teaching as of now? No, no, no. no is no, no, teaching no. something that you would consider getting back into us and, and making it into like a long-term career? To be honest, it, it, it's not something that I would want to do. Yeah. But if I have to do it, it's, it's not something that I won't mind doing. You know, this is a this is this is off track question. How do you feel about the way the Guyanese society treats our teachers? You know, you were once a teacher, so how do you feel? You know, I I think if, if you're using one word, it seems as if it's ungrateful. <laughs> right? but, I mean, think about it this way: this person, this instill that knowledge in all the other persons who basically go out and have careers that pay you far more. Yep. So teachers teach lawyers, teachers teach uh, mathematicians, chemists, uh, all of these professions, and they earn more than teachers. So mm -hmm. how could you quantify somebody who instills knowledge in persons who could justify their salaries mm -hmm. and you can't give the teachers a salary that people people you know some i think our society don't understand the, the fully the importance of teaching the power they have and it's not just even about you know grooming people to become lawyers and doctors and stuff teachers have the power to decrease crime you know they have the power to decrease poverty they have so much so much so much powers you know and still they be take they 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 are like taken be, be taken for granted. I mean, if if you think about it, I think um when the the new government was in place and they spoke about um basically giving the ministers a larger salary because um it's going to decrease corruption, it's yeah. going to do this or whatever. I mean, think about it the same way. I mean, give the teachers teachers are and police officers yeah, also. Yeah. Teachers and police are the two most influential set of public workers for me. And the nurses plays a, a major part. But Correct. teachers and police, you know, they they can decrease so much of society problems, you know. I mean you got you need to think of life um as if it's a house. Mm -hmm. If your house your foundation for it's your house exactly. is exactly it's gonna cave in. So and teachers play that fundamental exactly. role in bringing up somebody, whether it starts at nursery uh, or primary or whatever. Yeah, they're the ones who would instill that knowledge um into somebody. A lot of persons don't get that knowledge at home, That's but they fact. get they rely on their teachers. Teacher, yeah. And if they're not Second. motivated, to cheers do it, to that, then, man. Cheers to that. Yeah. So it's time to take another shot, man. I was just about to refill too. So <laughs> it's like a double. Yeah, we we'll take another shot. You can you can refill your drink, but we 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 get we're gonna take another shot. Let me see. When last you had some banco wine, buddy? Um, hmm. a couple, a couple of years, a couple of years. Alright, so let me, let me, let me drink some banco. Me and that banco for a while. I had Vasco the other night. Banco is one of my brother's favorite. Banco is the gateway drink to all drunkers in Guyana. This is the first thing you start on. And then somehow they, they moved to Hawaii. They moved to something, <laughs> but banco. Everybody start on banco. Yeah. Some people are still drinking banco, but let me say you don't drink them banco right now. Cause I don't want people to see them drinking them banco. Yeah, I think my first drink might have been banco, if not. Yeah, ever. banco is every at least what old age group. Banco is the first thing. Banco or Vasco. Yeah. Yeah, I had banco mixed with ginger beer and then garlic afterwards for my mom. Wow. Wow, and then we all been there. Yep. Cheers, man. Yep. <laughs> well, 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 kind of mellow from. The, we, we yeah, 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 yeah. It's up, uh, it's up. Uh, so, you're currently the big boy at Sambora. You know, we uh, uh, playing guy in East Term, it's the big boy at Sambora, Guyana. <laughs> Give us a brief description of your role within this organization. Well, I'm currently the director of um, the big boy at uh, Sambora Communications. Uh, yeah. So, Sambor Communications is basically um, a contact center, yeah. uh, commonly known as call centers. Yeah, like uh, for like teleperformance. Good. So, I mean, the dip, why we categorize ourselves as contact centers because it, we no longer just utilize the phone. Mm -hmm. You put email, SMS, video. So now it's just we can contact in, through all these channels. So okay. it's just a contact center. So um, we provide services um, to... The US, the um, UK, okay. um, even services locally um, to Guyanese um, companies. Uh, so it's basically the whole outsourcing industry. So sometimes you get businesses might not know, but 
it, sometimes it works out cheaper for you if you can pass on some of your services to an outside company and let them handle the stress and you know that you're going to get something efficient than basically taking on a whole team of workers. Okay. So that's what Sambor does. We take your work, we do it, do it really good, and then pass it back. So to what you. is your role? What, what does the director of operations do? Uh, um, well, director of operations basically um, needs to ensure that everything operational, whether it's um, technology, whether it's quality, sales, um, general production, everything for, kind of basically comes in back into operations because mm -hmm. if the body isn't operating then mm -hmm. you're basically dead so yes. you need to make sure that all the departments are talking to each other mm -hmm. and they're executing um in the way so you're you're that one thing that pulls the the other departments together you know for everybody who's watching you know shane just started the job as a director of operation he actually began as the data analysis yeah and now five years <laughs> later He's climbed the ladder and he's the man. What was that experience <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> coming from the bottom to starting yeah, from the I bottom? Think the the here. story has some words like one of those things like you started from started from the bottom down here, okay. right? But, but basically uh, I when I joined somewhere I knew that it might have been hard going for the top spot. Okay. People don't know you and if you, they don't know you, um the harsh reality sometimes in the end is that they, they fight them, the fight them. Everybody, everybody was, they, they, they basically give their friends a little nudge. Mm -hmm. But I knew to myself when I started somewhere that if I got an entryway into the company, all I wanted them to do was see what I could do. Okay. So any, I, I first interviewed as an agent. And when I got there as an agent, um, the person who interviewed me, they basically... They they, they, li they like me. In terms right of to win. Just like when you right? walk in the salon again, <laughs> right, the so, women was going crazy. They met You're a likable guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's your new name from today, the likable <laughs> guy. <laughs> so I mean, they, they after that they were like they, they messaged me a couple of days after on Facebook saying um there's this opening, um you should apply, send in your resume. I did that and then I was invited to an interview with the CEO okay. and um the operations manager then. Okay. And um, the guy that you took it, it away is job from <laughs> <laughs> the, the same one that interviewed me and like wow. me <laughs> and um so I interviewed today and the next day I was there working. And you was actually with this company from the beginning? Yes, yes. Day one. We started in February first, two thousand and twelve. So um I was there from the inception. So basically I guess that gave me the edge. So being there, I basically saw all the the issues, the ups, mm -hmm. the downs, uh, and we basically tailored the company with the help, obviously, with the the, the other members the of other the team. It's definitely it's definitely not a one man show. Okay, you, you, teamwork always makes the dream work, as they say. Teamwork, awesome. some, but yeah. sometimes you gotta be selfish to accomplish. Uh, well, America does teach you though. Yeah, you need to be selfish <laughs> at times. Yeah, but I mean, you still get credit when credit is due. So, so. is it safe to say that you're like the backbone of Sambor right now? I mean, well, <laughs> I'll uh, put you on the for spot. All some more people that will be watching, obviously, <laughs> I'll definitely share it um, at work. And I mean, I I I do a lot. I mean, they they know uh, when we speak, they they realize the effort and the amount of um effort that I put into um to some more being there for so long. You definitely can't just get mm -hmm. up and walk away. Okay, okay. So uh, I mean, I I want to. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, you're yes, the backbone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a, I'm you're, a are you like a, like a fish backbone or like a dinosaur backbone? Because you know it's a different texture. I uh, know. Well, I ain't about that fish backbone. Uh. But, <laughs> but that dinosaur backbone definitely, definitely. Definitely. I mean, <laughs> I mean sometimes, like you said, so you you because I, there's this quote that um that I heard when I was I just started um university. Um, it's about more story than a quote. So one of the lecturers was basically talking about um he was interviewing somebody for a job and they asked them how good he was and mm. he was being all modest and he didn't get the job and then afterwards <laughs> I mean well when they <laughs> they they spoke about it after he's like you didn't get it because I mean sometimes you basically need to be that person who says that yes I'm I the could best do it. somebody's looking for somebody who's exactly. got confidence I mean, we was we, we, we was just having this conversation today in the salon and I was telling Rondo you you know. If I come to your salon and you tell me that you're not the best, I'm going to ask you who's the best so I could go and have that person do my hair. So, you, you you know, it's not about being, being modest or whatever. you got to give yourself I mean, the jacket at times. Own, own your stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I think I'm the best creative writer 
in Guyana and you know well let me cheers to that cheers to that <laughs> I'm sure you think you're the best at what you do also. I, I think I'm the best generally, right? You know what I mean? But generally, you see. <laughs> you, you speak it and it happens, right? For definitely, me. definitely. So we'll take another shot. These shots coming fast. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, you, like, what did you do with these questions, yeah, man? I don't, know. I don't mind these shots. I mean, it's, it is the sip and chat show. Right? Definitely. Alcohol stimulates conversation. You don't drink. You're going to die from tourists. So what are we going to have? We have, uh, we have seven years. We're going to try to seven. We're going to try to even have uh, coconut. You drinking um five year old? Oh, yeah, drinking the five. What five was life? This is um the creamy. You, you have had this? The butter mm-hmm. pecan? No, to be well, there is. You see, there's one thing I have inside. So. Uh, right. Yeah, this is super yeah. dope. I like this. One. I didn't even know that exists. I, yeah, I think this is pretty new. Ooh. This is new. Let's try this one. That one. That one. That one. That one. Come for you. Uh, so, cheers to being the man. Yes. The party yourself on the back. <laughs> cheers. Mm, good. Real good, eh? Mm. Real, 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 real good. Yeah, I, I don't really like desserts, but mm, I could have that. So you you actually mentioned earlier that you was raising a single parent home with your mom, you know? Yeah. Being a child. Being a boy child, actually, what are some of like the negative? I mean, we just always glorify our parents and our family for the positive things that they have done, whereby grooming us is concerned. What are some of the negative influence that you, your mom would have been stealing into your life? <laughs> the <laughs> negative things. I want to hear about the, the positive things. <laughs> I, I think, um, so, I guess some of the negative, I mean, g- guys are expected to just do be this kind of hard man in mm-hmm. society or, or whatever. I mean, being with, um, growing up in a, fa- in a house rather that basically the only thing that you basically saw were your mom's, your aunt's or whatever. Like it, me? It, it gives you a distant perspective in, into life. You you don't really grow up being... No, no. The, 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 the right thing to say is you be you become more sensitive. Sensitive, yeah, yeah. I mean, you become. I mean, you become more sensitive, especially to women' feelings. You yeah. become more sensitive. I grew up with like ninety-seven percent of my family were women. You know, I also grew up in a single parent, but it was an extended family. Yeah. But I, I just had one uncle. I had some younger cousins and stuff like that, older cousins, but it was a majority of them were women. And what that taught me was to be more sensitive. I cry. I'm emotional. You, you know, I mean, you can help it, you know. I mean, I'm forced always to basically, whenever, whenever I'm in like a conflict or whatever, I try to look at things on both sides. Both sides, definitely. So yeah. you don't get hot headed or just jump to a conclusion or whatever. You are you, you assess the entire situation, right? But I guess it, it is what it, it is. is. What, what what does the word motherly love mean to you? <laughs> well, that definition, motherly love. It's not easy to define. I mean, it it's is, one of those things. I mean, uh, we speak about unconditional love. I mean, that, which obviously goes right into one of the things on the motherly love. I mean, you think about motherly love, regardless of what that child would have done, um, whatever society perceives that child to be. Mm-hmm. Motherly love just bypasses all of that. It's like, I still love you, regardless. Regardless, of what, yeah, um, regardless. You and, I, you and your mom could be arguing about something now. Like I did with my mom just mm-hmm. before coming here, she, <laughs> she decided to wash my clothes incorrectly. <laughs> right, but yeah, I mean, that could be a fear. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean yeah. you, yeah. you can't put my nice, expensive stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, we all been there. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna go home just now, and she's like, "Come, son." Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it is. I mean, moms, moms, you can't, you can't stop them. Gotta love them. Do you think the single moms in Guyana are giving enough credit for the tremendous job they 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 do, especially when it comes to raising a boy child? I mean, a mother raising a a, a girl child is one thing, you know. Yeah. yeah. But when it comes to raising a boy child, like for example, like yourself, you was raised without a daddy. You came out pretty good. <laughs> I was, you know, my dad wasn't there, and I came out pretty good. Do you think those moms are giving enough credit in society? No, I mean, but, but that's just how it is. A lot of people don't even know how moms do it. Um, 
the society basically forgoes all of these um, things that matter for things that seem spicy to talk about. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's trending. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So society is social media. So, I mean, I guess that's just them. I mean, a lot of things for the mother, mother, single parent mothers do go unnoticed. I mean, it just goes like, okay, it's one of those things that, oh, you made a child, you need to do it now. Mm-hmm. But they need to be given credit. I mean, we, we give awards out to X, we give awards out to Y. Why, yeah. But sometimes you need to take a step back. It might seem simple, but it's not an easy task. I mean, mm-hmm. when you look back at um, all the things that your mom would have done for you mm-hmm. or any other single parent person out there and try to put, put the tallies together on the salary that your mother would have been on when you were a child mm-hmm. and all the things that you wanted and all the things that she wanted and maybe, maybe your siblings. It doesn't really add up, and I'm still puzzled as to how they do my it. mom did, did it. it. I yeah. mean, I, and I wasn't the easiest child to get along. <laughs> I, mean, I knew one of my mom's weak spots. I was like, I would wow. call say, um, I need X. I need to go to train that. And the school is taking us to train that. She being a single parent, she's like, or, or I need um, money to go to this um, school party, get clothes. She's like, well, I don't really have. I get vexed, hang the phone up. She calls me back five minutes later saying, I got it. X. Uh-huh. I mean, my brother and I, we knew what our weak spots were. Yeah. And we exploited it, but she somehow always made it work. Mm. And then I guess the only thing you can look back now and realize that back then, we were the ones getting the new clothes, not her. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, 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 no, uh, it's no secret that some, some families is bestowed upon, you know, the younger generation are whether it's religion, whether it's political preference, you know, and all these other hereditary stuff. What was the most important gift that was given to you by your immediate family? Other than your last name. <laughs> well, the last name came from my dad. From your dad. Immediate I mean, family. He's not a bad guy altogether. I mean, he tries to make up for it whenever he could. But too late, yeah. too late. <laughs> but um, I think the best gift that um, I would have gotten from my fa- um, family is um, education and the and free will. Because I acknowledge I'm not the easiest person to get along mm-hmm. with. And if I make my mind up that I'm doing X, that's what I'm doing. And they allowed me to have that, that free will to roam and explore to an extent. But I, I think a lot of people, um, a lot of families sometimes try to restrict what persons could do yeah based and on what they would have they done want. And, I, and I, I hate that i mean yeah. i didn't allow even if they wanted to i didn't allow it but eventually they basically just okay yeah you realize that you you want to do this and i'm going to support it. you in the end okay. and it's this i guess the gift is support support okay so yeah. it's time for another shot yeah. and we this time we'll cheers to support what about the the rum punch yeah, yeah. It, it's supposed to be good so. yeah you know about it um, it's not since not since is that wrong? So long as two thousand nine. I mean, there was some kind of rum punch that was out the um before. I mean, these things come and get rebranded a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a fact. So, yeah, that's a fact. So we're gonna cheers to family support. Support. Mm-hmm. 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 Nice and smooth. Well, that's yeah, what I'm drinking. Cool. So. You know, it's not, you know, it's no secret that you're a computer genius and you actually spent some years teaching on. So if you were, you know, if it was up to you, what would be like a third choice for a career? Third choice for yeah. a career. Um, and why? Strangely, <laughs> right? I mean, be, be having, uh, being a person that accomplished uh, uh, quite a few goals um, mm-hmm. on my to-do list, to be honest, I don't mind being like um, what do you, what do you call these people? Like like a personal assistant to a celebrity. Oh, like 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 a stylist? Or? Well, well, not necessarily like a stylist. I mean, I my biggest thing is I like feeling accomplished okay. and getting tasks done. Right. So um, yeah, I mean, I like getting the impossible done. So like most of these like celebrity persons, they like to give you things that. You can't can't really do, do it. right? And I and I think I I will love the challenge. Before you answer this question, I'm gonna just let you know. Don't say Rihanna, cause my boy Macy might be mad at you. <laughs> Who would be that ideal celebrity? Oh, <laughs> no, 
It won't be Rihanna. Uh, it won't be Rihanna. Uh, Miss you, you're good. Because you know me, so you're going to be creative. It, it won't be Rihanna. But Even if it's a local celebrity. It's not a local celebrity. <laughs> no. A Tamika, a Jackie, a, a Blaze. <laughs> I mean, Blaze is my dog. I love Tamika. Jackie is my friend. But, but not them. Um, it's, International. It's not them, but... Um, Somebody I, who can pay you what you truthfully deserve. Definitely, yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Obviously, I don't mind Beyonce. I don't mind Drake. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Even Jay Z. I mean, I think I'm, I'm going with the money. Yeah. Ah, right, good. You you mentioned Beyonce. You mentioned Drake. You mentioned Jay Z. What would you bring that is different when it comes to Drake? What would you bring? Whether it's the way you dress, whether it's the way you orchestrate is is verses. So, what would you think would be your contribution to the the, the OVO camp? Uh, I think it, like an overall package, basically. I mean, sometimes uh, it, it when as a celebrity you need to sell, you are basically selling you. Yeah. Good and I I think I have a good fashion sense. Um, he's got his own fashion sense. Not too, drinking right? a fashion sense, but I mean, in, that's his fashion, right? <laughs> it's that's his fashion. His fashion sense. <laughs> I mean, he could do a little better in the dancing or whatever. The dancing, me that plan he can give you. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, yeah. Well, the dancing, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could definitely hook you up with. Uh, I mean, I, I don't. I, I could dance a little bit. Yeah, I'm yeah. quite a good friend. I'll be seeing you in court. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> definitely. So I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna hook him up on a real good Caribbean back ball. Like, yeah, accept it. I mean, you know, I know you really want wine or real. But yeah, but you know, for do it. Yeah. You know, pull out for the bumper and <laughs> nah, take charge of the bumper. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. What what would you say is like the biggest misconception that people in Guyana have about you? Yeah, well, I think in the Guyanese society, like this week, they, 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 too bad they, we don't they, get paid for it. Carl, we would have been yeah, they just talk and talk and talk yeah. and talk. Uh, um, a lot of people claim that they know me. Most of them have never spoken to. Me. Never, me- don't you can despise that when somebody say, "I know Shane." But they never. Oh, I, I, I never met Shane, but I know Shane. Like, what the it, fuck is that it's, possible? It's really sweet because some of the things that I've heard, eventually I put it on the bucket list. Good. Because I was like, okay, if you think I could do it, maybe I should. Exactly. Right. But um, a lot of people go around saying a whole lot of stuff, right? But I really, uh, they, they think that I'm just this guy who goes out parties all the time, shallow, um, materialistic, optionistic, mm. or whatever. But nobody knows that. Everything I've got, I got. Yeah, <laughs> likewise, <laughs> likewise, you know. People are always come saying this, the, the, you know, even my friend Rhonda, you know, people just come, whenever they see me in the salon, they just come and they be like, you know, this guy, that, that guy. I just be like, Rhonda, are these, do these people know me? Are these people that met me prior to this? She'd be like, no. okay, but you know me. Yeah. You know, I, you know like everybody it's crazy. Knew that, uh, basically, like, who didn't know me from when I was younger or on my way up or whatever, they basically, um, well, when we started hanging out after a couple of weeks or two, they all was yeah. just one story. It's like, it's you that. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. This is what society told me about you. Yeah, but it's so, different. It's, it's so different. It's, mm-hmm. it's always, it's that. I guess yeah, sometimes. But, but, you know, I just always tell Randy, you know, opinions can't pay bills, so. And everybody's entitled to their own opinion, so fuck yeah, that shit, you know? <laughs> exactly, I mean... Mm. Yeah. What, God, what God knows about me is much more important than what any human can think about me. Especially those who don't know me. Yeah. If, 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 if Rhonda, or if my friend Macy, or if my friend Julian, or Jermyn were to come to you and say something about Jamal, well, that would hold some relevance, because guess what? These you know, people would know me. Somebody who don't know me, who don't hang out with me, who ain't got no picture with me, me them is not even Facebook friends. They just going around here and things. What kind of relevance yeah, is that? You know, because I, I was at work the other day, and one of my friends, or slash colleagues at work, came up telling me about something they heard about me. Mm. And when they told me about the person that they heard it from, I'm up to now I don't know who this person exactly. is. I mean, like, if you know your name, I guess you're in for that relevance. Exactly. You know. That's, you know, before you go, let abuse know where they can find you if they're interested in getting to know much about Shane, much more about Shane and smelling this cologne that Shane is wearing that's driving all the ladies in the salon crazy, man. Yeah, you should uh, see them. I wish I could turn the camera with me <laughs> and see them. What they going on? They're lost. In. Lost. <laughs> on social media, my name is um, Shane Pierce. You definitely could find me on um, Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn, um, Tumblr, 
Instagram. Um, on Instagram is Sugar Shane too. Sugar Shane. S U G A Shane. Yeah. Too. I mean, but I mean, I like people. Uh, I like socializing. Definitely. So, yeah. I'm not one of those persons. If you come up and talk to me, I'm gonna say, "Do I know you?" Mm-hmm. Or, or, or or whatever. I mean, the, I, life is short. Know as much people as you can. Definitely. And I think there's always network in that. Yeah, your network determines your network. So the more people you know, determines how much money you can make. So before you you go, you know, you came, you, you drank some liquor. We had a good time, you know. You basically let us know a lot about you that we didn't even dream about thinking about. So who would you like to have this intoxicated experience? Would you like to nominate some of your friends you like and have this experience that you're having right now? Um, well, I think um, what, what we basically coming from. Um, I don't want to say nothing, but coming from a deprived um, area or, mm-hmm. or, or whatever, um, community or whatever, and accomplishing so much, I definitely want to see somebody else who did the same as I did. No uh, particular person. Yeah, that, um, well, no, I'm, I'll tell oh, you. Okay, okay, um, yeah. um, and basically, um, be an example to other persons out there who might think, okay, I'm from X, I'm from Y, nobody else have done these things. Yeah. Why would I be the outlier yeah. or whatever. So I have this friend, um, he's from East actually. East? Yeah, um, he is a lawyer. Um, right now he graduated, I think it's last year. And um, he You know East is my hometown, right? Yeah, I, mean, I know you're from East, okay. that's why I know him saying, yeah. yeah, he's from East. And he basically uh, went through a, a, a whole lot. It took him, um, he went to UG, he had to go to Trinidad, and, you know, mm-hmm. studying to do law mm, is hard. not easy. Very uh, complex. Uh, <laughs> Public, but this is private. This right. is private, so you're gonna be comfortable, especially once you come to see the lady. Yeah, sure yeah, I, I think we look at each other for the support. Okay. He's one of those persons that I talk to if something is bothering me as well. Okay. And, um, well everybody thinks I'm this hard shell or whatever, but I guess I'll never know. Mm-hmm. But he was a good dude. He basically That's it? Kyo yeah. only? Kyo 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 my good friend. He's a good dude. That's it? No nobody else? Um and nobody there, else. in terms of nomination, obviously a lot of good friend that we came from Farm One straight up. Nielsen McKenzie. Nielsen McKenzie. Yeah, yeah he, he, he liked to be balling now or whatever. But right. I mean, a lot of people see us in Palm Court down because we, we hang together a lot and okay. think, okay, these guys are all about the bottles. But our heads. The bottles empty. and the ladies, because <laughs> just, just when I think it was Saturday, I was in Palm Court and see you had some fine looking ladies yeah, around. Yeah, you can't be alone now. Yeah. <laughs> no, Nielsen was in there with me too, right? Yeah, yeah. He yeah, came out with, with us earlier, but he left. We well, left, okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so did we forgot to talk about anything? Is there anything you want to plug, you know? Anything that is going on for you? Um, no, I don't think that, well, I forgot to talk anything about me, but I think i like to leave with maybe advice. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Because I think a lot of persons now may be thinking that, okay, looking at me, For sharing this story, and it's always a pleasure meeting people like you know. We have met a couple of times before, you know. We, we have vibe, you know, instantly we have vibe, so it was only right that I have you on the show. So, you know, thank you guys for coming to get another episode of Intoxicated. Yeah, thank you for coming to the local talents, local geniuses, local inspiration, local motivation. You know, so you always share that I'm saying to you, you can smile. Until next time, be good.